Hello guys, myself Sagar Sherla, Senior Collaboration Trainer at Okta Networks. So I would like to welcome everyone who have joined this session. So the agenda of this session is to try and understand what new things Cisco have added in CCI Collaboration version 2, what are the new challenges, what are the new hurdles which Cisco have added and how Okta Networks can help you out to clear those hurdles and achieve your CCI number. So I would like to start with a small introduction of myself. So I've been doing training from last four years and I've been associated with Okta Networks from last two and a half years. Initially, I, was, I started my career as like a freelancer training and later on I joined Okta Networks. I've assisted like around more than 200 students to achieve their CCI number. I've delivered several corporate trainings in several companies. My recent training was in a Kuwait based company where I finished my training on CMS and Expressway. I have deployed multiple projects as a freelancer as well in Tata Communications, DHL and many more. Okay. Talking about CCI collaboration lab exam format. So before I proceed with this particular session, I would like to tell you the prerequisite of your lab exam is still the same. You have to clear your 400 written exam before you be eligible for your lab. Okay, so talking about CCI collaboration version one. So version one was complete eight hours configuration lab exam. But in case of version two, it's completely different. It's been divided into three different modules. So those three modules complete your eight hours. So that's what we are going to try and understand what exactly are those modules. So module number one is troubleshooting. In case of troubleshooting, a candidate may get a topology. So few things will be already configured for the candidate and candidate needs to try and understand what's going around, what are the configuration done. And there might be a mistake or misconfiguration done in the existing configuration. He needs to analyze that and need to correct it out. And he needs to verify it as per the Cisco exam question set. Module two, that's diagnostic. A diagnostic is pretty much similar to your CCI written exam. It will be sort of like a multiple choice question or a drag and drop question. So in this scenario, they will, they will give you a question with stating some sort of problem and followed by that, they might give you some resolution steps, which could be your options. Followed by that, they will give you some documentation, which could be a, a email thread, a network topology diagram, logs, traces, or some console outputs. So you have to go through this documentation, analyze, what exactly is the problem and you need to correlate it with your question and select your right option. So that's all with your diagnostic. I would just like to add something to it. As you guys have gone through with your CCI collaboration version 2 blueprint, it says CME version 12.0 is part of your lab. So I would say CME 12.0 would be part of your diagnostic since CSR doesn't support CME 12.0. So ideally they cannot add it in the lab or tissue where you have to access your real devices. But in case of diagnostic, you're not allowed to access any of the devices. You have to go through the question and you have to select the right option. So that's my assumption that CME could be part of your diagnostic and they might use that is uh, a 4K router to take the logs or traces in case of CME. Module three, that's your configuration. So your configuration module is pretty much similar to what you guys have been doing in your version one. So you'll get a, a network topology with a set of question set and you have to go through those question set and you have to do the implementation as per your question. So I would just like to add something to your configuration module. As per the blueprint, it says that the phone needs to be accessed remotely. But to access the phones remotely, the phones needs to be registered first. So according to me, registration part won't be part of a candidate's job. The phone will be already registered for you so the candidate can remotely access the phones. Okay. So that's all with your configuration module. Okay, so in this slide, we'll try and understand that 
each module of your lab has been allocated with how many hours of time. So in case of troubleshooting, it has a two hours of time. In diagnostic, it's for 60 minutes and your configuration is for your five hours. In case of troubleshooting, you are only allowed to access your virtual devices. In case of diagnostic, you're not supposed to allow any devices. As I already said to you, you have to go through your logs and documentation. In case of configuration, you have to access your virtual as well as your physical devices. Your physical device is nothing but your IP phone. Okay. Few things you need to know before you attempt your lab that the modules will be delivered in the fixed sequence. So the first will be troubleshooting. Second will be diagnostic and the last is your configuration lab. It is also important like a candidate won't be allowed to go back and forth between the modules. When you're working in a troubleshooting module, a candidate may get an option of borrowing a 30 minutes from your configuration section. But remember, when you do or when you decide this, whether you want to borrow or whether you need that extra time from the configuration lab, you're not allowed to go through the question set of your configuration lab. So course plan is the topics which will be covered in our bootcamp. So I'll go through all the topics as well as the subtopics which will be covered in our bootcamps. So it's a complete 10 days bootcamp. Every day it would be a four hour session. So on day one, it would be protocols and APIs where we will have an understanding of few protocols that is like SEP, SACP, H323 and MGCP as well as we'll have an understanding of STP and media that is early and delayed offer. We'll also have a look at how to analyze and troubleshoot the SIP headers like name, number, URI and privacy. On day two, we'll have a look at infrastructure and quality of services. So in this, we'll cover the topics like DHCP, NTP, CDP, DNS. Also, we'll have a look how to troubleshoot your layer two and layer three connectivity issues on your day three day four and day five it's your call control and your dial plan which is a huge section so on these three days we'll cover localization and glo globalization what is partition what is css what is translation what is transformation how you can make them into the call scenario your local route groups, that is your SLRG, your URI dialing. Also, we'll have a look at your expressway dial plan, that is your transforms, search rules, zones, subzones, which are part of your dial plan. On your day six, that's your endpoints, user management, and mobility, we'll have a look like on single sign on, like some mobility features, as well as your EMCC, that is your extension mobility cross cluster. On your day seven, that is your edge services, as well as on your day eight. Okay, so that's program will be for two days, where we'll have to look at your MRA, SIP and SDP normalization, and your toll fraud. In case of MRA, we'll have understanding of what is a deployment model and everything, then how your Jabber logs in, that will be covered in MRE. Okay, so section, uh, that is your day number nine, media resources, meetings and call recordings. Well, in this particular day, we'll be covering CMS, like what are spaces, ad hoc conferences, what are called breaches, web bridge, on-premises, hybrid and cloud. Okay, and the last is your collaboration applications, which is your I'm in presence, your CUC, your UCCX and CUE. And lastly, we'll have a small discussion about your exam strategy, which you can follow in your CCA lab. Well, there we go. That's our CCA collaboration version to topology. Okay. So as you can see the topology, your whole topology has been divided into three different clusters. So we have headquarters followed by a BR1, and a BR2. There we go. That's my public network and that's my 
backbone network i have few servers in my headquarters that is my publisher subscriber cuc ccx i'm in pn cms server here we go that's my expressway c and we have a expressway e that's in my dmz network i have a jabber pc over here for my jabber login in case of mra right so i have a public dns as well over here in case of pr1 again have a publisher cuc ucx and imnp server over here we just have a publisher remember every cluster has two ip phones that is sip 8845 okay let's move ahead okay so now we are going to have a, a kind of small demo session where we'll just cover small topics like cisco expressway and how your traversal works between your expressway okay so let's start with it designed for and deployed with your cisco unified call manager okay so previously all your video endpoints used to get registered on your vcs so cisco came up with an idea instead of keeping two different devices where your ip phones are getting registered on your call manager and your video endpoints are getting registered on your vcs so let's get things centralized on your call manager so they came up with cisco expressway where if any registration for video endpoints comes to your expressway he's going to proxy those connection towards your call manager and your endpoint is going to register at your call manager so that's the reason it says designed for and deployed with your call manager even your call control has been taken care by your call manager expressway is not going to even do that okay that's your next point not used for your call control provides remote and mobile access for your cisco jabber and fixed endpoints so doesn't matter if you're sitting in your internal network or if you're sitting at your internet or your external network at your home you can access your jabber from anywhere in your world okay so that's nothing but your mra so we are going to have a huge discussion in our boot camp regarding your mra provides business to business video and audio for unified communication customer so you have two different organization okay and both the organizations have two different video endpoints and both have this two box solution that is cisco expressway so both can communicate between each other that is your business to business communication expressway c and expressway e so these are two different terminologies which has been used that is a two box solution while well, expressway c is the one who sits inside my internal enterprise network while my expressway e is the one who sits in my dmz network okay we are going to have a look in our next slide regarding the same uses standard security protocols that are well understood for firewall traversal so you don't have to worry your security team okay because all your communication are always initiated from your inside network so you don't have to ask your security team to open any ports okay so working of expressway firewall traversal as you can see the diagram we have a call manager expressway c and a video endpoint in my inside network we have a expressway e in my dmz while i have a endpoint in my public network as well so let's see how the traversal works between my c and e my expressway c is a traversal client while my expressway e is a traversal server remember whenever the initial connection is been initiated it's been always initiated from c to e so you don't have to worry your security department to open any of the ports on the firewall once the connection has been established between c and e your c is going to start sending keep alive messages to your e to make sure the connection has been maintained when expressway e receives an incoming call so the call from your public network so when he receives a call he is going to route the call to your expressway c and then expressway c is going to send that call to your call manager and the call manager is going to send it to the endpoint once the call is established the media is going to traverse your firewall 
and it is going to use the same connection which was been established between C and E at the initial phase. Hope you guys have enjoyed this session. Hope you guys understood how exactly the expressway firewall traversal works. For more information regarding my CCI collaboration version to bootcamp, you can also ping us on email that is info at octanetworks.com or you can call us at 89766-76689. You can also Skype us at octanetworks at gmail.com. For instant updates, you can also subscribe to our social networking websites at YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter. As you can see the URL for the same on the screen. So thank you very much and all the best.